I'm Ellen and today I'm going to show you how to make a little crochet bonsai tree. Um, this is one that I did a little while ago and the one we're going to do today is a little more complicated than this but it's going to be a similar kind of concept and the techniques you use to do this are applicable to larger trees. I want you to take a look at some of the trees I've done before. This was one that was entered in the fair this year. It didn't do so well. Apparently tree house, my tree house was funky. But the techniques are exactly what we're going to talk about today. And this was one of my earlier tree projects that actually won Best in Show at the, the Del Mar Fair of the year it was entered. That was uh, 2008. And very similar process. And, and the, the crochet work is a little more intense on that one. We're going to shortcut a little bit. But very similar process to what we're going to do today. So you can take it a step further than what I'm going to show you. Um, when I first started doing them, obviously I did trees, but then I started to get interested in the bonsai look of them, that they're little, they do look like little bonsai trees, and I kind of studied bonsai a little bit, and I found that it's a very important part of bonsai, I don't know if you can see it, is the platform. So when you're, if you decide to do it as a bonsai tree, you're going to want to make sure you include a little platform, it can be anything, this is just a block of a, a nice hardwood that I found at the store. Um, you could use a, a dollhouse table, I think would be really cute, or a ceramic tile, or anything like that. It just kind of brings the tree into focus and makes it look more like art, as it were. And for the tree we're going to do today, I decided to go again with a little spoon, because I think it's really cute, and everybody likes them. And I went with a little saucer, because I think it's kind of funny that we're going to have a little spoon full of tree. Just my sense of humor on that. So. And you can get these at Asian markets or restaurant supply stores, anything like that. They don't cost a lot. I think I paid a dollar for the spoon and two dollars for the little coaster. So I'm going to set those aside. Now, the things you need in addition to your you know, platform and your, your, your container, you need to have thread. I'm using, I use Sulky 12-weight blendable quilting thread. It's cotton. It's variegated. You can see I buy it in large quantities because I didn't get a lot of trees. But they are available in the smaller size. You may be able to find them at a quilt shop locally. You may be able to get them at Joann's. I know they carry Sulky products. But you can also certainly find them on the internet. It is the 12 count. There's 12 and there's 30. 30 is way too small for me to work with anymore. Um, I'm in fact going to use double strands of the 12 because I can't see. <laughs> So, so you will need. We need. This is going to. These two are going to be the the bark. These two are going to be the dirt. These two are going to be the roots, and then this is going to be used in the um, the grass, which is a slightly different process. So it only, it stands a lot. You need metal wire to be kind of the, the structure of your tree, and this is just floral wire. I like the green for trees because if you miss a little bit and something shows through, it doesn't jump out and scream while there's wire in there. It's green, it's a tree, it's acceptable. So um, you need that. You'll need white glue, white glue, and plaster of Paris, which is over here. And then this is kind of the, the, the most out, out there thing that you need. This is a special yarn from Habu Textiles. I don't know if you can get in on and see that. Habutex says it's a paper moire. I don't know how to say that. And it's it's very difficult to find. That's all I can tell you. If you have a high-end knitting shop near you, high-end as in we don't think anything about $20 skeins of yarn, that might be a place to contact to see if they have it. The internet is your friend. There are any number of places on the internet that sell it for a very affordable price. So that's, and you get a lot, even though you pay a lot for this little thing, I think I paid eight, almost $8 for it, I will be able to do 10 trees with it. It's, 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 but one thing you've noticed about it is it's wet. And that's a problem possibly because for some people because they don't make it in any good colors. But it's what's nice about it, I should tell you why we like it, is look, there's our leaves. See? Little leaves that stick off the thread. So it makes for a very effective leaf look. But again, it's white. So I'm going to dye it. And I have dyed been dyeing the, 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 the stuff for years. It works very, very well. Um, 
the aspens I showed you earlier, that actually was all dyed with food coloring. And I, so that's an option you have. I'm using rip dye, and I think it works a little better than the food coloring, but the food coloring was okay. So if that's all you have, just you know, let it dry thoroughly. Now, I've taken it in little bundles, little loose bundles like this, and I'm going to put it in the dye to soak. You want it really loose, otherwise it misses in some places. It does. It's okay if there's lighter and darker, in fact that's good, but it's not so great if there's a big chunk of white in the middle of it. So, you, so make it kind of loose. I'm just going to shove a couple little bundles into each of these things. That one's yellow, and this one's orange back here. And this one is red. Okay, so those are going to soak. I probably should have gotten myself a napkin. Um, those are going to soak for, I'm going to leave them overnight and um, deal with them in the morning because I really want that color, I really want that vibrancy. You, I think per the instructions it's only a couple of hours, but do it how you want. I just find that I get a better punch that way. So, to start our project, you need to cut up your floral wire. And they don't need to be all the same length. In fact, it's probably better if they aren't. But these are four to six inches um, in length. And you can trim them down later. So if it turns out I way overestimated how big I wanted this tree to be, I can just trim the wire with my wire nippers. It's not a problem. But it's really a problem if you decide in the middle of the tree that you don't have long enough branches because you just can't add to it. The, the stability comes from the, the wire going all the way from the bottom up through the top. And if you don't do it that way, trust me, it is not very uh, acceptable. It doesn't work. So then taking these two threads, and I used a number nine hook. Um, there was a time I would work with one thread and a tinier hook. And I can't see that well anymore, so I don't. Uh, but the point is not how big the thread is or what, how big the hook is. It's what you want to get out of it. And so whatever works for you. And we're going to crochet, I'm mean, crocheted a, uh, a wrapper that will go around this. And that's going to be our bark. And here it is. Here it is. Now I started it, I crocheted very linearly. Very, um, just single crochet back and forth, back and forth. And that's acceptable. But as you see, you do get a little bit of a line look. So if you have any freeform experience, this would be a good time to pull it out and do it. Um, little bullions and um, stuff like that will really help break up that linear look and give you length stitches and things like that will give you a, a more natural looking bark. So this is perfectly acceptable, I think, but this may be, if you can do it more, what you want to aim for. So now I'm just going to sew this around my little bundle. And I'm going to have roots below and branches above, so I want to set my trunk, kind of eyeball it. Obviously you want to favor your branches are a lot longer than your roots. And I have a threaded needle here. And forgive me, but I have to take my glasses off to see to do this. And it's just what you think it's going to be. There. Cut that off. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to divide up the branches. And if this were a bigger tree, for instance, the, the tree house, I would continue to crochet separate pieces, sew them on, sew them together to get the bigger, bulkier limbs. But this is going to be a little tree, and switching to wrapping now will speed up our process, make it all go a little faster and easier. In point of fact, the, the first one I showed you that's in the spoon, there is no crocheting on that tree at all. It is all wrapped. Um, wrapping is just a lot faster. It isn't crocheting, so um, it's kind of, I feel like it's cheating in a little, little respect, but I don't feel too bad about it. So I'm going to separate this section out to be my first branch, and it's just how it feels to you, you know, how you want to do it. Um, but I do recommend that the sec any extra section you're not working on, 
get it together as tight as you can and get it pointed away from you because it's going to attract your, your thread and it's going to make you crazy. So then take my thread. And then I am going to, it's kind of, kind of weird to do, but I'm going to fold it in half. Get as much as I can in there. And I'm going to attach it to the crocheting. Just pull it, pull it through like a little slip stitch. If you hear a purring noise in the background, that's our guinea pig. Possibly also hear the neighbor's bird. Okay. Take a little bit of school glue and squeeze it on there. And you don't need to use a lot because it is going to squish forward as you work. And really just start wrapping. You are not trying to make a perfectly smooth surface. You kind of want to get little hanging threads out of the way, but you don't, you're not trying for perfectly smooth. Again, it's a tree. You notice I'm going around the other branch, the, the, the other part too, because you have to connect them a little bit. So I think now I'm going to split off a section. Let's see, I have some ones that are shorter in there, so I'm going to pull them out. And that's one of the reasons I think it's probably a good idea to cut separate lengths, because different lengths, not um, all the same, because it kind of guides you a little bit when you kind of wrap around like a Y for a little bit to get going. bit of thread and I'm just going to glue it right down. This is the place you do going to get the glue, it gets a little heavy when you're holding down the tag ends of the thread because when they pop up later, it doesn't make you happy. Alright. So I think you get the idea how we're making our tree branches. It's really very straightforward. They just, you keep pulling wire apart and, and to make different offshoots. So I'm going to go ahead and come finish this off camera. Um, and cut off all the little ends, and then we'll come back and we'll work on the roots, okay? So here we are. Um, I have wrapped all of the branches and, and on the tree and nipped off all the little extra pieces of wire, and every single one of them had an extra piece of wire. And I think it, it really does make a nice tree-like shape. You know, the way the wires separate, going from bunches of wires to smaller to smaller, gives you a very realistic tree look, I think. And you even get that little scary fingers and stuff like 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 this the, on the branches. You can, for fun, make a little crochet a little face. Here, crochet a little face on your your base piece, and then wrap that around, and then you'll have a scary Halloween tree. Yeah, you, you, know, you can have all the fingers clinging down, looking down, like reaching, like Cinderella's a uh, Sleeping Beauty's wild ride, or whatever it is. So the next thing we're gonna do is the roots. The roots work exactly like the branches, only different colored thread. The only difference is don't take the little ends off. Leave those on until we know how it's going to fit in the, the, the little spoon because you may need those for support. We're going to bend and poke and stuff to get it to fit in the spoon. You may need those, so you can take them off later if you don't, but um, leave them on just in case. They will be covered in plaster. It's not like they're going to be seen. 
Now, one thing I didn't show you is what to do when you have your second piece of thread. You've run out of your first piece of thread. You can't really go back to the base of the tree. You know, you could in this case, but that particular thing happened here, you can't. So I'm going to put this down. You want to just take your thread and make a little slip knot and go over something that's already done. Like that. And start there. And then pull out what we're going to make this section of roots be. Start there and then move right on over into the new part you're working on. It'll give you just a little more continuity. Um, it'll all flow together a little better if you do it that way. Forgot to put some glue on there. And it's very important, I don't think I mentioned it, it's very important to make sure you really glue the tips. Little beads of glue at the end is a good thing because when you go back and you clip that wire off, it uh, will keep your your thread from unraveling from your from your wire. So. And this is going to work exactly the same way. I'm just going to split them off and keep going until I get to the end and move over and do a new, new piece of root. So that's really all we can do. I'm going to go ahead and finish this off camera. That's really what we can do today. Tomorrow morning, first thing, we're going to take these out of the dye and get them drying, and then later in the day, we'll Go ahead and finish up the project, either today or tomorrow, but it, it's a real fast project. So, we will see you then. Hi, okay, first thing in the morning, well, 9 o'clock, but since my hair is wet, I just got out of the shower. We're going to go ahead and get our leaf yarn ready to use. I did forget to mention yesterday that you want to have green as well. I have leftover green from another project, so I didn't dye any this time, but you probably need to. Um, Green is something you use a lot, so just dye a whole bunch of it and you can use it later. As you can see, just dump it into a metal strainer, rinse in it. That looks really good. Then I'm going to take it in my little uh, paper towels and squeeze it as hard as I can to get as much water out of it as I can. Really squeeze it hard. The more you get out of it, the faster it'll dry and the faster you'll be able to use it. But it does need to be dry before you crochet with it or you will, as you can guess, get dye all over your fingers. Then I'm going to set it on a paper towel here and I'm hoping it'll get sunny today and I can put them outside to dry because I want to finish up this afternoon if we can. So that's it. Pretty straightforward. See you later. Okay, we're back. Our um, threads have dried and they look very pretty. As you can see, really nice you know, fall colors. And here's my roll ball of green that I have left over from a previous project. And now I'm going to start crocheting the leaves. This is a, an autumn tree, so they're going to be pretty open. We probably should look at the little tree, if you haven't seen it, with all its roots and everything done, and these are open. And as you can see, it's bigger than the spoon, so that's going to be um, some bending involved to get it in there, but that'll give it a real good firm base, and it'll make it, it'll work real nice. So, okay. I'm going to work two at a time. And I'm using a B hook. And this here is my little sample. I wanted to see what size hook was going to be the best, and this didn't. I wasn't able to untie it, so I'm going to save it. And any little ends or pieces that you you have, just save them because later you can work those into the ground cover to look like the leaves that fell off the tree. If you've never done freeform crochet before, um, this is your chance to start because you really don't want the leaves to be a uniform lines. So they need to be open and swirly and kind of random. So you're just going to mix it up. And I chained three and then I did a single, a double crochet in the first hook. Now I'm going to chain for a little while. Another double crochet back here. And just grab any thread. There's a lot of them. Like I said, you 
you want it to be pretty open because these are trees that are losing their leaves. A little while. See it's stuck now, so I'm just going to pull through another one. And that way now it's loosened up a little bit. Now I'm going to change colors. I'm going to take the orange off and I'm going to put the red in its place. And I'm just going to cut. And And if the little tags seem too long, you can cut them off, put them in your save bowl, and use them for fallen leaves on the ground. And what I'll do is I'll do yellow and red for a little while, and then I'll go back and put the orange in place of the, the uh, the red or the yellow, so I'll have red and orange for a little while. You go back and forth. You just don't want to have blocks of color. You don't want it to be red, you know, a little block of red, a little block of orange. You want it to be mixed in as naturally as you can. You could even use a bigger, if you, if you can do this, a bigger hook and work with all three at once. That would certainly be a, a way to get it all looking mixed in. Because trees just aren't, they aren't very symmetrical in the way they line up their colors. Okay, so then I think I'm just going to keep crocheting for a little while. And when it, you see it's looking nicely like a little, uh, like leaves, we'll put it on the tree next time, okay? Okay, so I have been crocheting little leaves. And as you can see, I've got different shapes. They're not flat, they're not square, they're not round. Um, some of them are long and skinny. That one's going over here. Um, some of them are round and long and skinny. And I ended up with leftover all yellow, a bunch of yellow leftover. So I made a little yellow thing and we'll find a place to put it. Now we're going to put our leaves on the tree. This is best done with a pair of needle nose pliers. You can use glue sometimes to help it out, but really what works the best is to bend your branch through. And I actually have a little wire sticking out there. Just bend it down. Stretch it maybe to here. Sorry, that came off. Anything that pops off, put it in your little bowl because you'll use it for ground cover later. Okay, so I have put all of my leaves on here. I've just wrapped them sh around, shoved them on. Um, this is one of those long skinny ones over here, just wrapped up into a little ball, whatever. The different shapes, we'll fig you'll figure out how to put it on as you go. But I think it makes a nice autumn-y looking tree. The next step is to fit our tree into our spoon. And as you can see, the footprint is quite a bit bigger. We're going to bend. Roots typically kind of come up a little bit from the base and then come down anyway. And the tree is going to be standing up on a mound. And just 
guesstimate first and then we'll look and then we'll make adjustments. And let's see. Still a little big, so smoosh. And if you've ever looked at bonsai trees, they are very rooty. That's a typical presentation is to have a lot of roots showing. Okay, I think that we need to sit kind of steady in the bowl. That looks pretty good. So we're going to stop and do the, my least favorite part of the show. We're going to do um, Plaster of Paris. So that will take a bit for me to get together and do other stuff. So that's the next step. I'm going to do it so I can see it because I need to scrape it from the bottom of the cup. There we go. That should do it. And we'll cover up some of the uh, problem areas with ground cover later. There we go. You really get it down in as far as you can get it. And we're going to have, when we do the ground cover, we're going to do grass that kind of hangs over the edges a little bit. So don't worry overly about there being stuff on the edge. You can cover pretty much all the sins later. Alright, now we kind of are going to let that sit while we crochet our ground cover, which is going to be brown for the most part, and just regular crocheting, working in our little extra leaves as we can, just single crochet back and forth, triangular pieces to fit, and then we'll talk about doing the grass. So, that has to rest. Okay, day three. But that's, things got a little complicated in personal life last night, so. I discovered that the plaster of Paris didn't really fill up as far as it was comfortable for me, so to compensate for that, I put some polyfill in there before I started crocheting the dirt covering that you see here between the, the, the roots. And I've got some pictures I took of that to show you. So you can take a look at that and then we'll go on and chop up the grass. So for the grass, I'm using the colored yarn that I previously had dyed. That's the same Naboo textile thread that was used for the leaves. And I'm working it with a single strand of sulky 12 weight variegated cotton blendables. And I find this gives me a very, I think, natural looking grass. And the trick is that you can only really go in one direction, so you have to kind of work in a circle. So I crocheted, a, I started with a little chain and then I went around it like this. And that way I can push the, 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 the leaf to one side. You can see on one side it's much more textural than on the other side. And so I'm going to finish this up. And I'm making it kind of uneven and like grass, you know, pushing it out. So I'm just crocheting like a, a little chain. I can't see. And then come back. You can see by, by putting my hook between the leaves on the, the thread, I'm able to kind of keep most of the leaves on the other side of the work. that 
tie it up and then bury that little end back here. Somewhere. Same thing on this side for my skirt, so they're already back. And then it just goes down with the white wood. It sometimes takes a little bit of folding, as you can imagine, it will, to, to get the crocheting to stick to the glue into the plaster. I find you have to kind of look at it every few minutes and poke it down and you might have to add a little more glue occasionally to it. Um, just right at the first maybe 20 minutes to make sure that it's all stepped down nice. But put on it to plate, and I think it's a really nifty little bonsai tree. I think all told, it took maybe five hours of time to do, and cost of material was no more than about five, six dollars. So. Um, it's a nice, inexpensive little project that will be, would be a good gift for um, anyway. I can see putting that on an executive desk and it being a nice little centerpiece for them to talk about. So there you go. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you try more exciting things, more exciting things with it. Thanks.